Hi, and welcome to the Galactic Astrology Podcast. My name is Ursula O'Farrell with the Ascension Playground, and I am joined today by the co-host for this podcast, Julia Balaz. And as many as you know, Julia is the creator and founder of what's called the Quantum Soul Guidance Practitioner's Course. Today, Julia and I are celebrating the graduation of Patrizia Trotta, who is based in Italy, and she is now a certified galactic astrology quantum soul guidance practitioner. Welcome, ladies, and congratulations, Woo. Patrizia. Woo thank you. <laughs> it's good to be here. So thanks, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. I love how I'm calling in from California. California in the United States, Julia from Ireland, and you in Northern Italy. It's just wonderful to know that this podcast is reaching a, uh, a global awareness and global audience. So Patrick, me. we would love to know um, your story, the past, like how did you come upon finding Julia? And, and as well as it's amazing how you were born into a family, a family that supported your very inquisitive mind, because you have reached the PhD level, let's say, on this journey of discovering amazing and diverse uh, modalities that work with energy. So let's let's learn a little bit more about you, Patricia. Uh, I just want to say a word about my family. Really, the weirdo, uh, in a nice sense, was my father. And my mother is normal, was normal. She, well, they're, they're both passed away anyway. But, you know, the, shall we say, not very human one was my father. And uh, my mother didn't usually have a, a, an easy time with either of us. But <laughs> that's a, a whole other story. Um, the other thing, very quickly, is I was born, mercifully, I should I say, with a, a very wise inner voice. And the volume was very high. So in this lifetime, nobody, including my very powerful mother, ever could, um, you know, shall we say, tell me, or shall we say, be more um, influential. I'm trying to say the real authority on me still is my inner voice. Well, this, this, whatever it is that I was born with, and I've never really been able to understand why. And so really, my whole story is weird, but it doesn't come from my family. Uh, it comes from this. I mean, I could spend three days telling you the weird things that happened to me, and I'm still not deciphered, ever will. So I'll just accept it. But I have risked my life more than once on this guidance, which has always been very, you know, very wise and, and whatever, but still um, more than more than once. Uh, uh, well, uh, it's, it's a long story. You don't want to hear. Maybe, maybe you do, but I don't think tonight we'll have the time for that. So um, I want, I just want to go for some reason. I just want to link with how I, I got into Julia, shall we say. Um, it wasn't very long ago, a few months ago, um, suddenly on Gaia, uh, uh, I'm, I've got a membership. Uh, I just saw this interview with Debbie Solaris. And I thought to myself, look, hang on a minute. Why don't I do that? Uh, you know, I, I've been galactic all my life. First of all, I want to know more about my own, about, aside, from, aside from what I already knew, I wanted to know more. But then I felt this is something to do with me. My destiny is somewhere here. Uh, but it wasn't the right person, wasn't Debbie Solaris, and I knew. Um, I think on uh, one day I was just on, on YouTube, you know, just checking on, on the television, and just, the, you know, the things sometimes come up. And then Elena or Elena Balan, or, or whatever her name is pronounced, um, then you came on with an interview with her. And I thought, hang on a minute. And then something told me, check on Udemy. Then I found you there and I immediately subscribed to that course. And from there, I knew from what I felt inside that I had to carry on. So that's how it, it worked. But it was because of a sudden excitement, uh, which I have not felt for decades, not yet decades. Something inside just vibrated. And I thought, aha. Uh -huh. You know, I cannot ignore what's happening here because I've been dying to feel like this again. Because when I was young, I had loads of all these, you know, whew, enthusiastic things and you know, being an Aryan anyway. So that I haven't had felt like that for donkey's years now. So also because it's it's a bit of a sad um one second, if I'm allowed. Five uh 
2017, so it's five years ago, my wonderful sister, we were like, um, like twins, but we were not. She unfortunately died. And so that for me was a major blow. Um, it's taken me, you know, a bit of time to get up again, let's put it this way. Um, it's not that I collapsed, but I had to take care of my elderly mother. So there was no time for me to grieve. So after my mother passed, then I could, you know, contain and, and process all that sadness. I know she's there. I mean, we do communicate all the time, but it's not like having her here. We did everything together. We were supposed to grow old together and that didn't happen. But, you know, when the soul is shaken in that way, I think it adds, it adds a, a mellowness. Um, and I'm not sure whether that's a word, but it's a sweetness in the heart, um, which probably made me probably a little bit more tolerant, not that I am really, but a little bit more than before. Well, I, I'm not, you know, what can I say? I'm not, I'm not going to sing my praises when I'm not there. So I'm not a particularly tolerant person. No, actually, I think I'm intolerant, really. That's it. Especially against, you know, with stupidity, I'm just, I have, or, or slow, you know, the slow. Yeah, I know, I, I just don't have it. What can I say? I'm certainly not perfect, trust me. No, no, but I am very intuitive. I like that. That angra, I'm very practical. I, I, I like that stuff, you know, that thing. I really like it. Thank you so much <laughs> for sharing yourself completely authentically. And I am sure that this will resonate with, oh, yeah. with many people. Um, I can uh, comment on several things that you mentioned there because yeah. there were so many important points that you addressed. First of all, um, I recall, so I think, I don't know, a year and a half ago when I actually uh, published my courses first on Udemy and then I moved to Teachable, uh, I remember, I believe you were the first astrologer that took the course that got me so excited because I was eagerly waiting for a feedback from an astrologer uh, and really? when, oh. when yeah you were the first astrologer to, that took my course and I was over the moon with your feedback and just such a big weight was taken off my shoulders it was such a sigh of relief knowing that, oh my god I have now a blessing and approval of someone who I you know as you said you've studied for, for decades so I, I remember you now so thank you All so right. much for that yeah and <laughs> it, it gave me more courage to to follow through with sharing this information so my god the amount of work that went behind your course is, is unbelievable i thought dear god this girl the go girl i mean you know i can't i couldn't believe it um you know i certainly respected that i don't i don't agree with everything you know that because i've already told you so I, it's not I, I don't subscribe to everything there are things i you will you won't catch me dead talking about that stuff but you know, there's, there's room for everyone. So as long as I'm not, you know, forced into a role that I is not mine, um, because I, I couldn't be otherwise, this is who I am. You know, what you see is what you get, very Aries. What you see is what you get, so. I'd like to just jump in real quick. Yeah. You know, Patrizia, um, having lived myself in Italy for a year, there's this um, engagement of the heart. There's this um, desire to really feel into anything that you pick up and owning it. You know, and so I'm just going to give a shout out how blessed to be able to have the voice that could guide you and you would trust this voice. It's not something that most, I would say, have experienced in my generation or our generation. So it's wonderful how perhaps new younger ones, I, I saw that you're really into the violet oh, yeah. and blue yeah. ray, but let me just shout out. So there's a broader umbrella for those who are listening that Patrizia does come with a PhD. She has studied psychological um, education and works with the archetypal energies and has move deeply now into the galactic, but she also brings a very interesting other element of working with draconic astrology, which is new for me. But on your website, I did write down something. You were really trying to help from the heart, anyone moving towards Patrizia's energy and wanting a session, how to express our multi-dimensional galactic nature. And so here is this beautiful guidance system that you were basically born 
with and trusting this. So for those of us who haven't necessarily heard the voices that you do, to be able to put with the mind a huge dashboard of so many and various types of divinatory practices. I mean, you call out Bashar and channeling, um, Barbara Hanclow, Barbara Marciniak and the- I've met her personally, actually. Met her personally, you know, Freddie Silva, I got to meet him personally, you know, but there's a broader dashboard. And so having, you know, this Italian ancestry and then studied in the UK. So this is where that beautiful accent of yours come in, comes in. And then being able to speak, you know, and teach bilingual. Now I feel like energetically, you are also adding, uh, how do we speak galactically? You know, how do we engage the cosmos and the psyche together that is not just earth based, that suddenly this box has opened up and you felt it when you saw the interview with Julia, as I did, something activated. And so, you know, I just wanted to offer this broader, like your counseling or your sessions will bring in a wide variety in the toolkit. Perhaps you can speak to that because, you know, sometimes when someone sees the PhD, they might say, oh, uh, high level. And, and, you know, am I, what am I going to get here? Is it psych, you know, a psychological evaluation or are we, how do you, how do you want to address that broader dashboard, Patrizia? Um, the only thing I can tell you is what happens when I look at a chart. Uh, I've been working with draconic astrology for a long time for, you know, literally decades, but the problem, the diff something happened when I added the galactic stuff. And I can't say, I have to be honest, I can't say that necessarily the galactic side added anything to draconic astrology, but I am looking at charts, all of a sudden, boom, it all comes together. And then I receive all this information and I see it's like, zoom, 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 everything. I see the lines that, you know, connect. yes, this is it. This is it. And I see it in five seconds. And it's like, hang on, you know, this is too quick. What's going on? And, and then, and then I, I calm down and then I look at the, literally at all the astrological details and everything I perceived immediately is confirmed. Um, so what, what I, the only way I can describe it is, um, it first of all has to have a very practical, uh, kind of help to make help the person whoever it is that that's uh, that I'm talking to uh, or with um, uh, feel better about themselves and use their strong points to shall we say strengthen their less strong points um, this is both psychologically and spiritually and on a practical level because I'm always wary of what's happening with transit progressions, what happened before, uh, what's coming up, you know, the, 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 the coming, shall we say, the winds that are coming. And, um, and I, I see all of that and I am told what the person, well, it, somehow I'm either directed either to the galactic cards or to one of the thousands of things I've got here. And it has to be quick because I have no zero patience. So it has to be quick and to the point and practical or I'll have no time. So whoever works with me from the other side, they just know, take, you know, they have to take me as I come. So <laughs> I, I'm happy to be of service, but it has to be practical. Um, you know, I'm not interested whether you had a thousand lifetimes. I just don't care. I don't see the relevance. You know, uh, uh, the relevance is how do you apply what I'm telling you in this consultation today to make you feel better? Um, it, that's, that's my concern. So I'm asking upstairs management, this is how I like to work. Please help me. So, I, you know, I just become, I'm totally humbled because I really want to help the other person. Uh, but again, with a proviso, it has to be practical. So that, that's really all. Let me ask you then, because for me, what you're describing, I'm, I'm, I'm chuckling a little bit because this they're showing me an image of a shish kebab. You know how you like spear <laughs> in and it's really focused. And so it's this idea of an energetic shish kebab. Um, but what it feels like to me, and let me know if this feels the way for you, it's this, there's no time for, you know, holding hands and oh, hearing about the victim stories. It's really about 
get real, get present. And it almost feels like it's channeling, being able to use a vocabulary though, that can call in the galactic. So here you've got some proof over here. These are your soul connections. Here's your astrological natal chart and here's the transits. But what it feels like to me, Patricia, that you actually do perhaps is work with this, this team of energy that helps get to the point quickly. And so it seems like maybe the best client for you is those who really want, I mean, they're committed and serious about I'm ready to take that next level what do you see and not kidding themselves um you know I'm, I have I'm, I'm sorry to have to say this but there's plenty of people out there with a huge ego that needs to, they they are special yeah all of us are special thank you uh you know give me a break um with that kind of attitude I have not really not I'm not the right person so if somebody wants to know um what their background is galactically and how to apply it, you, know, you know, in a practical way in this lifetime, uh, particularly seeing, you know, the, the, the archetypes, act, the psychological uh, archetypes active there, and the draconic, which is the soul side, the, um, that the draconic tells me, let me explain what it is, first of all, it, very quickly, it's, it's based on the nodal zodiac, it's based on the, the north and south node, which are known, uh, I'm no expert on those, but they are known to be connected to the the plan what the soul wanted to do when when it decided to incarnate in this particular incarnation um it will show it's very simple or anyway let, let me put it this way i am very simple so i like simple things because i'm too for probably no not patient for anything that's more not simple so i just conjunctions and oppositions that's all you need to see literally what you know what they do in the chart the angles what they conjunct what they oppose and, and that's all you need you know all there is to it if you have the eyes to see because you know it needs a trained eye because if you have a trained eye you will see it in half a second then that tells you volumes of what the soul wanted in a very again in a very practical and, cl and clear simple way and um, the way i like it anyway i mean i i see it that way let's put it straight it's my filter i filter it through my simplicity need let's put it this way so when you see that and so it tells me okay psychologically i've got this characteristic then i've got this need that the soul wants how do i merge them so my uh shall we say gift or, or talent if if i can call it that way is seeing it quickly clearly it's very clear then you add the galactic part um, I don't know, I, I, for example, uh, you are, I can see a strong Andromeda, it doesn't necessarily, it, you know, I, I don't particularly care that it has to be that particular point or that particular point. Andromeda is strong, that's all I need to know. Um, so I need, you know, I know that you are uh, somebody who needs freedom. And then, for example, I see a chart of somebody who is not very fiery, um, maybe very shy, and this person maybe has a problem pushing through and, and you know, living more freely as they should let's put it this way at least psychologically then my job is if the person gives me a hint it you know helps me understand that that's where they want me to go then help them see how they can use it you know encourage them until uh, until they can't you know they have to to do something about it because they, they feel so encouraged that they can't not do it <laughs> you know they can't not feel better in, in in you know what i'm trying to say i'm also a healer I, I'm, I keep being told so i've got the energy that i lend to people without working as a healer ever i won't ever mention the word but i know i, I support them in a way that's very energetic and they feel better it's, it's always been like that since i was little so whether i liked it whether i don't didn't and often I didn't, but that's another story. <laughs> we won't go into that. So, wow. yeah. Well, wouldn't you agree that healing, wholeness, finding how to balance energies, how to know what archetypal energies you were born in with and what you're working with, that clarity for like, let's get real. And, and I just want to also comment, like, I know everyone's special. You can have a star. You can have a star. Oh, what star seed am I? We got to get over that and I, in a sense that there is work to be done as far as clarity of knowing yourself. And so when you have that and you can beam out, this is me, that is the not me. And you know, this is me, uh, it's stepping into my sovereignty. 
Um, I, I sense this with you, Patrizia, that it's a no nonsense. Here comes the fire hose if you're ready for it, because it's, <laughs> it, it's not parsed out. It's not like muffled with like flowery stuff. You just are going to like, here it comes. Are you ready? It's, it feels very oracular in a certain way, but the languaging here goes back to your, you know, teaching languages. If you need to explain it or point to something, you've got that backup with your arsenal. Now, I do want to ask you a little bit about draconic astrology real quick. Are you using, because those people might say, how do I find it? Do you work with AstroSeek? Because I saw that AstroSeek.com has a capability to put into your natal information and then here's your your draconic and that word draconic having draco in it can you speak to that a little bit because there's some people who are a little bit nervous about dragon energy creator being energy uh well uh, actually i'm allied aligned to draco <laughs> so it's interesting i think it's my i can't remember what it was is it my saturn i can't remember uranus, uranus. i can't remember yes uranus. 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 yeah yeah uh, i just had this image um yes so uh I think it's something that I'm linked with somehow. So the, the word comes from the Latin name that the two, the North Node and the, and the South Node have. Uh, and that's where there's the word Draco is in it. So the draconic comes from exactly that. Um, it, it's got nothing to do with either reptilian or let's not forget that Draco energy is also very highly advanced. I'm not saying I am, I'm saying the Draco energy can be um it's very ancient anyway it's it's and again i my feeling and whether it's right or, or wrong i don't know uh, is that they have existed far longer than probably humanoid species that they come from another universe anyway and then we've got a lot to learn from them as well and we are doing that as, mm, you know, no kidding um but to cut a long story short if you wanted for example uh, personally i have uh, um kepler so it is a uh, uh, an astrological software so everything is done through that but for people who do, you know if they don't they can use astroseek and that can get their draconic if they want if you want to do it by hand it's long but it's not impossible but, but why should you do it by hand if there's astroseek that does it for you um what i do suggest on astroseek because i've used it obviously to, just to test it um is to always always uh, bring together so by wheel uh, the the natal chart and around the natal chart the draconic chart so what need you you need to look at mainly is what draconic sun sign you have what it does uh, what the moon and the ascendant are always check the galactic connections with those three i don't need the other ones those three i do those three i certainly do and the angles the angles are fun are just everything basically whatever conjuncts the angles whether it's natal or draconic that will tell you volumes of what the person is supposed to be doing in this lifetime it's very i just like to keep it extremely simple because there's so much to say already when it's simple why make it more complicated oh no no i don't have, I don't have the patience for that give me a break no no uh, but it, it is you know incredibly useful and practical and while julia is checking the fascinating part for me is this this idea of the word dra draco you know to understand that i'm gonna surprise myself 4260 years ago um the the star tuban in draco was the pole star so you know we like as human beings like to project our stuff out onto the heavens and the stars <laughs> no kidding. So, you know, one day, you know, the pole star, it's a pole star in Draco and the next day it's filled with reptilians and negative entities. So here's, here's the thing that is coming up for me now in this moment is the stars are emanations of divine beings. They don't care what you think or call them. They're just going to emanate. So holding this idea of dragon and Draco, you know, I'm half Asian. So in Asia, you want your child born in the year of the dragon. So it's a very interesting, was... almost like you were born. Oh, there you go. Even more proof that you're holding the dragon energy, an ancient creator being archetypal, you know, that, that as the world was being formed, you know, they're the guardians. And so the guardian of the pole star. So it's fascinating. So thank you for allowing for this conversation, but it's part of your toolkit going back to the galactic astrology astrology. So how do you hold that? I mean, you've got this whole calculator with Julia. When you do a report for someone, let's say a client coming in, Patrizia, and you do their report, where are you going to focus and zoom in on? The honest answer is on what I see. Whatever I see in the chart, I'm talking about seeing with my eyes. 
and whatever I'm directed to, which is always, again, the, the volume is high, so I can't ignore it. Um, and it's a zoom, it's a five second thing. I have to see it in the moment. When I've seen it, then I can, you know, elaborate, shall, shall we say. But um, the glimpse doesn't come from human Patrizia. I don't know where it comes from, but it's very quick. And so I know if I see that, then I'll know. Um, for some person, for example, somebody who's got a lot of earth and they're not living all the potential that's there, and maybe they're, they're you know, running towards all their Neptune stuff, 12th house stuff, and forget the rest. Then I'm there to hold the frequency. So uh, you know, I can make, I can help, possibly, um, help them love, shall we say, fall in love with all the, the potential that living their energy and grounding their energy can have for them. I know because when I was little, I was not grounded. It took me a long time to embrace all the earth that I have in my chart, which is considerable. Thank God for that. And my draconic son is in, in, in um, Capricorn, I'm glad to say. Uh, so, uh, you know, without that, I probably would have ended up in a, in a loony bin. I can tell you that. Uh, well, have you seen my chart? I mean, excuse me, have you seen that chart? No, no, thanks a lot. So, you know, I am grateful to all the gods and whatever it is, whoever decided to have that chart, that I've got the, you know, the, the Taurus ascendant, the, the midheaven in Capricorn and, and the south. It's not easy. I mean, that energy is not easy. Certainly Capricorn, uh, I'm talking about draconic now, the Capricorn, uh, draconic sun in Capricorn almost always means that there are delays. There's going to be delays. I mean, you know, you have to accept that, whether you like it, whether you don't. So, you know, make peace with that and try to make the most, the most of it because there's, there is always a reason. But in my case, the delays have been so many and for so long that if I haven't gone crazy, I don't know why. They tell me I'm not patient, but if I look back, I think I am. More than that, more than I recognize. <laughs> I think you are with all the project and work you've done in your during your PhD studies and research and huge amount of um, studies and contribution. I'm pretty sure you are. But I wonder if the answer is in the stars, because you have so many really um, positive connections that perhaps that's where the blessing is coming from, including your Saturn conjuncting Fomahot, Royal Star. You have several Andromeda alignments. You have Procyon. Um, Beta Centauri, Arcturus is opposing your sun. So there is a lot of um, blessings there. Uh, your vertex is conjuncting Arcturus. Um, and so and I have the sun conjunct Jupiter by birth, which doesn't mm -hmm. hurt, you know, it's one of the, in the 12th. And when they say, I just want to, you know, this is important, but whoever has, has that uh, alignment, I better, you know, listen up because it's important. Uh, there is almost like an extra blessing you you know you you are always going to fall on your feet always with that kind of um you know th this it's magic i don't know what it is i've seen it repeatedly it's not just in me i've seen with all the people who've got sun um Ju jupiter particularly in the 12th it's like you've got an extra protection there and i'm not sure how else to i think it is it. because it could be because you're chart is a morning chart so you were born when the sun was uh yeah. you know on the horizon and yeah. so jupiter would be your strongest uh planet That's, uh, so it's extra strong and few it's in 12th house and it's in taurus and uh, so um there is some connection there where it yeah. actually makes jupiter to be one of your greatest blessings to kind of make sure that it's not going to be doom and gloom so no, exactly. Yeah. Well, it certainly doesn't help with diplomacy. I can tell you that I've got none. So, <laughs> but with being Aries and having the, the sun, in, you know, it's close to Jupiter. Oh, God. You know, it just comes out with no filters. And you think, for God's sake, a little bit of tact, woman. You know, I recognize I don't, sometimes I just don't have that. <laughs> so, you know, I, I better make fun of myself and live with it. What can I do? You know, I'm not perfect. I never will be. Don't even want to be. So. There's also something else I, if I'm allowed another minute. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not because it's mine. I don't care that it's mine, but I, it is. it was very guided. I remember the moment I was creating that video. It's not perfect. I left all the imperfections in there because I don't even want to give do you want to give the impression of having anything to do with perfection? Thank you very much. But the Cosmo can, Cosmos and Psyche video is particularly for beginners is very precious. Because one of the mistakes me and the loads of, gener of my generation, astrologer I'm talking about, we ignored the, tended to ignore the, the aspects that outer planets made with each other. Instead, they have a massive 
influence on the collective psyche. And by showing how it worked in the past with all the events that happened and today and the future, which I've, I've placed all three, um, there it's all in, on my YouTube channel and it's right. easy to watch. And you know, uh, and there it's all written as I as it's narrated as well, so you can read and hear at the same time. And it's great, it, you know. It's it's a nice way of seeing where we're heading potentially. The X factor that you bring truly is this clarity of knowing and trusting, as Julia pointed out, trusting that the information coming through. And that's why I said it feels more like channeling. But you've got you've got the reports and things, a place to start if someone needs to point at something like, see, this is why. But yeah, you're yeah, really coming absolutely. in more as a channeler. So, and draconic. Oh, you, you'll you have fun. You'll have fun because it's so incredibly practical and empowering and simple the way I love it. So yeah, yeah. You know, in, a, in half a second, you will see this is what this person, you know, has incarnated for. That's it, that's there. Three points. Ba, da, da, da. Sorry, Sorry, I did check on astro.com, um, astroseek.com, and they do not um, provide the explanation of what, what which alignment what is. Shame. So, what would be a good book or website to go to for people to find um, the lineage? There is an expert um, who published books. Okay, I studied her material, let's put it this way. And I need to back off um, in the sense that up to a point or okay, but then again, it's me. I just, I just have this guidance. I know what I need to do more than that. I just don't want to waste time doing. And it, it has, she has made it. She is the great, we have to thank her. She's called, pa, um, oh, Pamela, oh God. Pam Crane, uh, and she she is the one that's made draconic astrology known. Literally, draconic astrology comes from the readings that uh, Edgar Casey used to the life readings used to provide. And somebody, because they didn't what the details he gave the astrological details while under self hypnosis, um, didn't make any sense with normal astrology. So somebody at at some point got got the the, the message. It wasn't normal astrology. It was draconic astrology. That's how he got the message from the soul. Um, and then, um, so, you know, then this gradually, it's a very ancient astrology, it's nothing new, obviously, uh, everything that's special is no, not new, is ancient, but Pamela Crane made this very known, so that's her books, and there's plenty of articles on, on internet. There is a beauty to raw, unfiltered, channeled information that is tuning into energy, and able to communicate through various languages or modalities. So I'm going to segue real quick because I'm curious, Patricia. And when I read through your website, the potentials, oh, and you have a YouTube channel now too, uh, which I've just subscribed to. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, I'm excited to ask you these questions about the future and the potential energies. And I know you say very clearly, it's not necessarily determined or it's not predetermined, but what are the potentials? If someone comes to you for a reading and you see this energy, can you speak to how do you, how do you hold the potential um, for what's coming next for a, a client? Well, for a client, um, obviously, I, I have to look at progressions, transits, and, and solar art directions. That's what I always use. Um, obviously, um, and the solar return as well. That's another, uh, uh, just a few bits in the solar return, not the whole lot, but a few bits uh, which help. Um, again, it all depends on what where the person comes from. If they have, if for, I'll, I'll give you an, a very quick, hopefully quick example of a recent client I had. Um, she was going on and on about, you know, having this soulmate and how wonderful a relationship it was. And all of a sudden, a bit later, it turned out it was everything but. And um, then you see what happens, you know, I, I was looking at that chart and I knew Pluto was also transiting the descendant and that been had been going on for three years. So, and, and activating uh, a T-square, which became, you know, a massive uh, alignment, shall we say, which needed, it meant that for her life was changing, her psyche was changing. She couldn't not look at that. Um, so I don't hear, what they, the, you know, the lies that they tell themselves. I'm a child of Pluto. I have no time for lies. So um, you, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna mm, be cruel to the person, but I will very gently 
offered the thought, look, I'm trying to tell you something, whether you don't want to listen or not, it's up to you. But I have to say this. And so I try gently to broach a subject. If they still resist, then I'll, I'll back off. Um, but I, you know, what they need to say will be shown uh, to hear, sorry, will be shown to me by the chart and by whoever, what, whoever talks to me from wherever they talk to me. Um, so it, it is both practical, both astrological and something else. And that something else cannot be trained. It's there in full stop. And as said, it's become much more astrological now and quicker now than, than it was just, what, six months ago. Right, so right. what happened? I don't know, but something certainly happened. Do you ever look at Julia's um, reports, the calculator and the reports it gives? Are there any markers in there for, that you found to help identify potential futures? Oh, you're talking about the futures of the planet. No, I'm not. Futures of the planet, futures of, for a client. Do you see, have you learned how to read these reports and have any aspect to, okay, well, this is the potential coming towards this individual, but looking at the, the reports that Julia, the quantum soul guidance um, practitioner's reports. I think I understand what Ursula is asking. I right. think the way to use uh, galactic astro galacticastrochart.com is to uh, look for transits of planets for the person that we are reading for, and then we can, you know, enter the date of the future uh, oh, that we're looking right. at and see what fixed stars alignments will be active during their transits if they're hitting any of their natal planets. That's how we can apply galactic astrology um, or right. fixed stars alignments to that where it can become strengthened. Like today, for example, or actually tomorrow, the full moon in Gemini will have several major cosmic points uh, in either conjunct or opposite alignment to Sun, Moon, Venus, Mars, uh, <laughs> Jupiter, so, and as I just posted that, many people are saying they are actually receiving such powerful activations. So this can also be then used in personal. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's loads of ways, personally. I think there's loads of ways I haven't fully explored yet. So not, it's not just draconic or, or pro progression transits and solar, there's loads. So, and there's um, only so much we can share in one hour reading, right? Yeah. They want to keep it practical for the here and now. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you, Julia, for rephrasing that because I did, I did have that a little bumpy. So Patricia, you know, the galactic reports, the galactic astro charts, you know, the soul connections that are really relatively new for, you know, when you look at how many decades you've been studying astrology plus psychology plus, you know, archetypal energies and these charts that you're looking at, at now for Julia, the question was more around, um, are you tuning into anything within the charts that might quickly show you the future potentials for a client coming in? Well, whether it's a future potential, I'm not sure. What I can tell you is though, I've noticed myself, Look, I'm looking at this wonderful, all these colors, which I need, desperately need. Um, <clears throat> and I focus on the planets automatically, on the planets in the chart that are strong. For example, somebody has got five planets in Libra, I'll have to look at Venus. The first thing I have to do is look at Venus, what Venus does, what happens to Venus. Um, I don't care whether I have to look at theoretically a Pluto, Uranus. I don't, I, I have to look at Venus first because Venus is important. Um, and, and then I'm just led by the, re the rest of the chart, plays a music, every chart plays a music and a totally different music from other charts. So I, I can hear the, you know, the main, shall we say, notes and then I'll focus on those notes and those notes tell me a story. Whether I'm making any sense is anybody's guess, but that's how I can explain it. <laughs> it's, it's so intuitive and, and practical at the same time that I can't really, you know, transform it into something incredibly logical. Somehow I know where I'm led, but it's not that I know, it, you know, for everybody has got, I've got a formula. Every chart is a story. So yeah. it's beautifully said. I, I, I'm totally getting you. I'm curious uh, throughout this time, um, when was it in your life when you developed solid trust in that inner guidance system? You know, was it early? I always on? had it. I always had it. Yeah. I never doubted it for a second. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember I, I wasn't even three. And I remember thinking I was like two minds at the same time, the mind of a little girl and the mind of whatever it was. And mm -hmm. I was trying to imagine the, the universe without life and I couldn't. And then I thought to myself, I'm a little girl. Where am I? I'm asking myself these huge questions. This doesn't make sense. And then I went back to being just a girl. But sometimes when I was little, I just had this huge, enormous voice with all this wisdom and thinking, what on earth is this? 
Uh, uh, that was my authority, and it still is, and it hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. Beautiful. Not that I don't question and I don't, you know, get yeah, stroppy. Yeah. Of course I do. <laughs> I mean, I'll try. I'll, I'll push and I'll maneuver and I'll try and I won't get anywhere. So, you know, I'll just have a laugh and, and just forget about it. But I'll follow the guidance always, always. Beautiful. Uh, and there's also this, this extraterrestrial part of me, which is a very strong part, whether, again, I, I can't not see it. Um, because I remember when I was, I didn't see them, but I remember I was interacting with another something dimension and one night i remember i was supposed to go somewhere and i remember telling these people saying i said no and no is no god i was little and i think what am i doing i mean sometimes i love myself i'm crazy um and then later on i just had this vision of this weird looking lady and i knew it was me on this planet which i think it's essasani or something similar uh, again going back to Bashar I've always felt this strong connection and she's living there she's in my future parallel self and she interacts with me all the time whether you know I am conscious of it or not so I've got that as well which I you know I, I don't discount it's not a tiny part it's always I've never been you know like everybody else I'm always I'm weird but in a nice way I mean I've accepted it so I mean, everybody wants the family and I don't, I just don't let me have my life. So by now, um, you know, I've got a dog and I'm happy with my dog and that's the end of it. <laughs> I'm not, I don't suffer because I'm not married or don't have kids, never wanted kids. So I'm happy with that, but I am definitely unusual. You know, I think the timing of this post podcast couldn't be more perfect today. We are going through full moon in Gemini, conjuncting Mars. And I think the energy that you're bringing through is just so spot on <laughs> in alignment with that. This is what a fiery, direct um, conversation is all about. So thank you. Well, thank you. This could go on and on. Listen, Patricia, as we wrap up, tell us the name of your website. So that if people are really interested and want to learn more about you and your YouTube channel, tell us the name of the site. The site is in Italian. So whether, you know, if I say in Italian, it, nobody's going to understand that, but that's the way it is. So it's tendenzefuture.org. And it means future tendencies. And I've just actually posted a, a very short video um, about future tendencies coming from uh, an interview that Lee Harris did. And I just sum it up and put the, the highlights there. So if you look, go on YouTube and just, just write my name, there's two Patrizia Trotta, there's more than one, but you'll see me because the picture is there. So you'll know who it, which it is. And then there's galactic astrology. You see everything that's cosmic and galactic. So that's me. Um, but it's a, a reasonably new channel. There's only very few things. It, it will grow in time. So that, that's and, uh, time. and on your website, you added English uh, explanation yes. about your galactic astrology reading so you offer them both in english and italian is that right uh the whole uh, website all the pages are in italian which can be translated but there is a whole page with, you know it's there's english written on it and it's sold for my english speaking clients or potential or, or just interested people there are a few uh, freebies here and there a few bits and pieces which are free there are links obviously to youtube channel it, everything needs to grow so uh, you know give me time and uh, i will i will try and, and just just you know just be entertaining because this stuff needs to be like you know it, it's it's light it needs to also entertain it needs to be colorful uh, you know not all holy and all that oh god no 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 <laughs> As we wrap up, Patricia, you know, our classmates are just growing, growing, growing in the quantum soul guidance practitioner no kidding. course. So I think we're over 300 strong. Yes. Is there a message that you would like to share, especially to someone coming in without the decades of experience that you have, how, how, do you have a message that you would give to our classmates? Yes, please, please be practical. Um, focus on what this person needs in this lifetime. We've all had dozens of thousands of billions of lifetimes everywhere. So, you know, let's just focus on how to make this one better. So that's all. It, I, I am concerned uh, of the way some people maybe, uh, I'm not trying to sound like a, a psychology, psychologist that's really boring, but I, I'm trying to say words have power. Please, let's be very careful how we use the words, especially if we want to place the psychics and all, all the, you know, the, these gurus who need to tell people whether somebody's a soulmate or somebody else. Please, I've seen lives ruined. 
psyche is ruined of people who suffered for years because of a, a medium or, or somebody who very too lightly tread, you know, didn't think they were trading on something precious and they just abuse the power of words. I am very concerned. So please be careful. That's all I have to say. Keep it light, keep it fun, but keep it practical. That's all. Then I'm nobody to tell anybody what to do. It's just, you know, a wise yeah. thought I had. Well, just in closing, it feels like what you're what I interpreted is our words manifest. So so holding responsibility as a practitioner, or even as we go out and try and find information from others who are professionals, you know, to use our discernment, but also be aware that, you know, in our sovereignty, this is the words manifest. It's a matter of expectation. Words have power. Just mind how you use them. That's all I have to say. Well, on behalf of Julia and I, Patricia, congratulations. We're so excited for your graduation and can't wait to hear about your future stories, sharing with so many different clients from around the world. Well, let's hope so. And thank you very much for, for having me uh, and for everything and for being part. I am grateful and honored to be part of the club, as I said before. Thank you very much again. Super well done. Here we are. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, good evening. Bye-bye.